I'm Rob LeCoury, a senior editor at Gold Derby. I'm here with Mehmet de Mesmany, the co who co-stars, sorry, as defence lawyer Hayley Fitzgerald in the excruciatingly tense and highly satisfying HBO thriller, The Undoing. Noma, I, you know, originally thought that this Hayley character would have been just a kind of a cardboard cutout, you know, just he, there to push the narrative forward. But she's so much more than that. She's got a lot of dimension. And I'm just wondering what you initially thought of her when you took on this role. Well, I love all the things you've just said, because I think if you understand a lawyer um, character, a defense lawyer, you kind of go, you go have a cookie cutter thing. But what you, we have here is a script written by David E. Kelly, who absolutely understands the world he's talking about when it comes to law as history has shown us. And also because he's a storyteller is the use of language. So I met Haley on the page. Well, no, I, I've got to add first, the first thing I read was the first episode. And I was like, what is going on? There's just, it was just that wonderful feeling. I've got to keep turning the pages to find out that, that lovely read um, uh, when we're lucky to get it. And then I got the sides uh, for Haley because it, the, the pages, are, a couple of scenes, um, I had to prep to get ready for the taped audition. And I loved her. I loved her. I thought, oh, I have no idea who this person is, but I love her energy. I love, and it can go so many different ways, but you know, she's a singular person. So that's when we where it starts. And then, thank God, I got to get the part, Rob. So that was handy. And then the people you work with, they start giving something to you. You start giving something back with a director. There's a wonderful, how are we all collaborating and making this story happen? And working with Susanna on Haley. I think I, I, there were some places I came from going, oh, that, that's not what I was expecting to do. But what she turned, made me turn into, not made me turn into, that's not the right word. But what she course corrected me, that's what, that's what it was, what oh. she course corrected me. Because I came in from doing theatre, so I'm still hitting the back of the room, it's all a little bit big, but actually, let's get stiller and stiller and stiller. And as I got stiller and stiller and quieter, that's when Haley started to make sense. That is so interesting because, like, she's a straight shooter, right? So I, I got that pretty quickly. She's defending an accused murderer, Jonathan Fraser, but she's got this powerful, quiet gravitas about her. You know, the first thing we meet her, she just kind of waltzes into the room. I'm then, so happy. I love that entrance. Oh this is just me as a TV watcher. I'm going, yes, hello. Hello, you what's that? your name? You want to yeah, see more? Yeah. What's going on? Episode three, towards the end. Yes. So excited to do that. Yeah. yeah. So I guess it was important for you to talk with precision, be formidable, confident. Like there was, I was almost scared of her. So what was going through your head? What was key for you to get into that mindset to play her with such authority? For me, what I've honed down, and I think in, in, in the few interviews we've did for the press of The Undoing, which arrived like a year and a half after we'd done it. Yeah. I believe, um, was that wonderful going, yes, well, where, where was I a year and a half going? And, and, and it's, I've distilled it to that sense of what makes her so formidable, so present in what she does is because of what she does. She knows she's good at her job. And I talk about, and I have spoken about the fact that she's chosen to work at a particular kind of law firm. For me, how I describe it as you don't know much about the people who work in this law firm. When someone like Franklin, Donald Sutherland's character says, oh, my light's gone, forgive me. Um, <laughs> Donald Sutherland's character says, um, uh, I want you to look after my daughter. Um, you kind of go, yeah, okay. We, we're we going to do the job for you, Franklin, because you can afford it for a start. Yeah, I think that makes total sense. It, I, I always forget that this show was done quite some time ago and, uh, and uh, it even aired quite some time ago. Do you find it odd that you're still talking about this this show that people have really, really loved. Look, you know, it was the most watched HBO show of 2020 and yeah. broke the record on Sky in the UK, yeah. previously held by Game of Thrones. Like, it's a huge show. That's huge, isn't it? Even just hearing that, you kind of go, what the hell? I find that extraordinary. But I also think about the time it did arrive. It's kind of, we're, we're hunkering down into the autumn, the fall, and... We've all experienced this huge, I mean, the beginning, I'm leaving the light off, sorry. My yes, like, it's still great. Thank you, babe. Um, uh, it's all about timing. These things are all about timing. And there's also a need, need by that point, we've all gone through the extraordinary spring and summer of 2020 for 
all that's happening in the world. And TV, we've kind of rinsed TV, we've rinsed all the streaming services. And then there's a thing that arrives which has, and there of course there are loads of other stories out there and brilliant stories out there. But there's something arriving which for me was the combination of Nicole Kidman, Hugh Grant in a Susanna Beer director's story written by David E. Kelly. You kind of go, all right, I want to see because of their history. Yeah. It's as simple as that for me. And so perfect timing, we're all in. And also I think the, the fact that it was a thriller um, and sets it up for that weekly, let's all get in. Yeah, let's all get warm in our sofas and just try and debate what's going on here. I, it was perfect timing. Yeah, it was. Like, as soon as I saw the project and what it was, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. I'm ready. I'm ready. So I get it. I totally get it. You know, um, so Haley says something during, uh, I think it's the third, I can't remember the exact episode, but it's all about how she sees these people as being rich and entitled that could potentially kind of get away with murder. You know, that they, these are the kinds of people that we're dealing with. And I was just wondering if, um, if that kind of uh, mindset how does that occur to you looking back and looking at what we what we deal with in day-to-day -day life, how the rich and the powerful and the entitled appear to get away with whatever they want to get away with? And that this show did a really good job of showing that. So the question is, what do I think about that? Yeah. Uh, sense of storytelling? Yeah. Gen yeah. Um, I, I find it really interesting because it's about privilege and power. That's what we understand. This is what these worlds are. Are, and they come in very different demographics and different ways of expressing themselves. But we all understand what power is. And when you see some, and, I, and I, I'm going back to Franklin's character, Donald Sutherland's character, because, and especially once you heard the cocksucker speech, can I say that? Love it. Oh, please do. Oh you. my God. I, I, I just, you understand there's, yeah. A, yeah. there's a knowledge of how to use his power that he's very confident in, and you have a sense that it's a dangerous kind of power. So I'm looking at it from uh, a middle class, working to a middle class person. Okay, I don't understand that, but again, let's go back to 2020 and everything that has transpired. And there's so many political um, references that we're living in that, were, were, that alluded to that. If you have the right lawyers, if you have the right um, context for making, because the law is there for the use of those who know it very well. And therefore I go back to Haley going, she knows how to use the law and she's very honest. And the, for me, it's like, you may or may not have done this, Jonathan Fraser, but I don't quite, I'll do my job. I'll do my job. And that's what I'm being paid for. So those places are in society. How, what I love is that, I, as with all things, it feels like actually at the moment, Rob, it is that thing of a lot of light is coming to places we didn't know existed or actually um, to investigate, if that sense. But there's a curiosity more to investigate that. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? I, I, I have to admit, I find it a little bit, aspir I shouldn't even say this, but I find it aspirational. Like, I would love to be in that position where, like, nothing really matters because I'll just pay my way through it. I just, I think that part of the allure of this show, apart from everyone's so beautiful and the, and the apartments are so gorgeous and the family so perfect, it was more, more like they, these people can waltz through their lives and kind of not have consequences. And I was like, geez, it'd be so nice to have that. Yeah, I think, what's, I think that, that's, that's all of us who don't live in those worlds. That's yeah. all of us. There's somebody else in a different position who's looking at you going, Gosh, I would love to have his life. I would love to have his life. The thing I absolutely know about every human being, this is, this is my experience of all the people I've met. Um, I would say that there will always be a story from an individual that you meet that will blow you away because it's out of context to what you know. And the one thing I know about human beings is that we do suffer. We do suffer. Even just the undoing, this mother, protecting her child when she realized was what's going on. And then there's another level of freak out that it could be her child. So those levels of the father of Franklin looking at his daughter, Grace, in pain and going, I want to help you. We, we do what we can with what we have. And I go spiritual in that everyone's in pain at some point, but some people hide it better than others. Yeah, that's a really, really good point. And speaking of, um, what I love most about the show, apart from its look and feel and the performances, was how it explores this idea of how we will twist ourselves into pretzels 
to make excuses for people in our lives who are obviously toxic or distrustful because we have to hold on to that glimmer of hope. Like despite everything telling us otherwise, someone like Jonathan has been able to grift or manipulate for years and years and years until it all comes undone. How did that resonate with you personally? For me, as I'm hearing you describe it that way, I, I see it as that sense of actually I've, I've created a construct which is perfect and suited how I moved into the world and around the world. And then that glimmer it, or that shuttle, that's, that little crack in, in the structure is actually the most terrifying thing. And that's t t the idea of it all cracking up because then you have to deal with the truth of how you move in the world. And I... I find that fascinating. I always find that. That's the tension of good storytelling. That's the tension of good storytelling, and especially when we see people who are not the majority living a life, who are not the global majority, li living a life that has been aspirational for so many of us, for all the great stories. I think that's why, look, I haven't watched it, but I imagine why um, Downton Abbey and The Crown have done so well, because we're peeking into a world, but we're peeking in and seeing the emotions that resonate with us. Did I kind of answer that question? Yes, you did. That is so, that's so interesting. And it's, oh, we love watching things like The Crown because it's like a fly on the wall into a completely, it's like sci-fi. It's a completely different it's world. It's based on reality, but it's, but therefore we project onto that what we'd love to. And I think yes. it's interesting with The Crown from, and again, I haven't watched it, but reading and what, being aware of Friends, the stories with Diane and Charles are almost too close. Yeah. Because the Queen's youngest story with Claire Foy and Matt Smith playing the, the Duke and the Queen. It's so far removed from our existence. So it's easy to sit with it. But as it comes closer, people are going, <gasps> yeah. oh, we're living this time. So it's always those glimpses going, they come, when it's far away stories, it's okay. Exactly. Yeah. You know, um, we, we, we talked about Hayley and, and her stoicism and how she's formidable, but towards the end, especially in the courtroom, there is quite a lot of vulnerability that cracks through. And I think that's the that's probably some of your best work actually on the show when you start right. to see this person is actually, has been working her ass off and she's, she's kind of uh, exhausted and also feeling a bit vulnerable. Can you talk us through what we, you were going through and trying to get that really authentic look when she was really starting to worry? You mean it was, this is the last episode? Yeah. Because I'll tell you what's interesting for me is that we got episodes one to five way in advance uh, in prepping, but six we didn't get. I didn't oh. get episode six to watch. I watched it live with everybody else. So I'd had enough time to kind of make notes for myself from one to five and kind of let it go kind of thing. So I'm, my process is going, oh my God, what are you doing? Oh my God, that's too much. Oh my God, that's too big. And then I get to watch it again. So it was really fascinating watching because I was going, why is she having a tantrum? Yeah. Because that's what I was surprised at how she presented herself, but everything is falling. And for everyone, things are falling apart when we realize what grace has made happen, has made manifest. And you kind of go, this is all gone to shit. Um, and it was different ways of doing it. And I remember Susanna kind of going, no, you can push it more, you can push it more. And I think because I'd been so restrained in all the other scenes, I was always very, oh my God, that's, now because I've, I started off as a theatre actor who was very big, then finally got the sense of simplicity and stillness um, uh, it, as a practice in the filming of it. And then that, that, that scene, I remember going, I'm feeling too big again. So it was fascinating watching that and thinking about what haley has gone through through and knowing what that was for me. I, I go post that moment, that was a humbling of Haley and everything because again, there is a vulnerability there. There is a vulnerability that you hadn't seen, but when you start worrying about them, I think for the moment that the hammer is discovered and seen and she sees it for herself, the wheels are turning and they're terrified. Yeah. And but let's hold on. Yeah. You can see that going through your eyes. It's just really, I mean, if I may say, really nuanced and really effective, compelling performance from you in that episode. Um, I hope everyone gets to see it. Um, and you notice, <clears throat> I'm not going into too many spoilers because I, in case yeah. someone, there's not one person on the planet who hasn't seen it yet, go and watch it. It's really good. Yeah. Um, there's another thing I wanted to talk about because I was watching yeah. Pose the other day. I was doing all the screeners for media and and then lo and behold, I see you in the uh, in the trunk episode and I was like, yes, yes, oh, oh. this is perfect casting. I, 
I think the Electra character is so funny and so interesting, and that episode really humanizes her. You play her biological mother, Tasha Jackson. It's really mm. moving portrayal of a mother in denial, and you get to play opposite Dominique, who is a force. A force um, of nature. Yeah, talk us through that. You've got this really cool Caribbean accent twinge thing going on there too. What was going on in that episode? Hey, that was me stressing out when I got the show. I was like, it was a lovely offer. Would you like to do this? I was like, oh my God, yes, because I'm already a fan. I'm yeah. already a fan of that show. And of course you're going, what? I get to play Electra's mother. And then, okay, so I go, yes, 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 please. And they said, oh, they'll send you the script tomorrow. I said, I said, yes, I just want to do it. And then um, I got the script and I went, oh, balls. Oh, God, it's really intense. Yeah. Oh, no, there's pain here. There's a lot of pain here. And then I, I heard, oh, and there's going to be kind of a um, New York Island accent. So my daughter's just passing me a little cake. Thank you, baby. She just oh, walked away. <laughs> um, and there's, a, there's a, an, a, a New York Island accent. I'm going, oh, no, accent again. Here we go. This is always my terror. It's always my terror. Really? But luckily, I have a brilliant um, uh, voice uh, dialect coach called Jerome Butler. So anyway, so and then I get to meet um, Dominique and it all kind of falls into place because I'm such a fan girl and she is one of the kindest in terms of energy and the, the hard workingest people that have, I have met because we do see this formidable Electra. And then you look at Dominique Jackson's Instagram and it's just, there's, there's, she understands her glamour. She understands where she's come from, as they all do, actually. And I think that's why it's been such a success. But the privilege of playing, I didn't realise how huge it was because it was just after, it was just before Christmas that I did it. And then I was like, I was nervous because it's frozen. It's, it's the trunk. It's, and oddly enough, falling on Mother's Day, I, did, I don't think they planned that. Maybe someone brilliant planned that. Um, yeah. But this is a story for a lot of people. This is a story for a lot of people and how people survive when you make chosen family. So I'm going around the house, but basically I'm saying I bloody loved it. And I was terrified in the best way. And I remember saying to Dominique in the morning of film, I'm saying, look, I'm nervous. I'm not your mother, but I know this is your story and we're gonna, we're gonna make it work. We're gonna make it work. Let's just be honest. So it was a pleasure. Oh, I'm, I'm glad it was. I'm not that you'd say I hated it, it was terrible, but uh, you know, I, you could tell that you were really in. And uh, I think it's the, one of the best episodes. I you it. done. Yeah, it's a really, really good yeah. show. Oh, that's great. So final question is yeah. a bit more superficial, but maybe not. Um, so you've won some awards in your in your life so far. You you know, you're no stranger to awards. Uh, and I think you've, you've been nominated for a Tony, is that right? Like, so, I have been nominated. And you find a couple of Olivier's, like, no big deals, nothing. Like, <laughs> um, you know, nothing to sneeze at. So I just wonder, what, what does what does that kind of recognition mean to you as a professional, you know, actor, actor performer? Like, do you, do you think, yeah, that's lovely, thanks very much, or does it mean more than that? Both, oddly enough. And not a throwaway, yeah, thank you, that's lovely, thank you very much. It's not a throwaway at all. It absolutely is, thank you very much. And I tell you why, because as an actor I worked with a long time ago called Joseph Mydell, we did a play um, for the Royal Shakespeare Company. And I got nominated for the first um, Olivier and I got it, which absolutely shocked me. And it was fantastic. And all that lovely dinner, getting drunk and then, oh, and the winner is all that stuff. Great, great, great. Um, and then I was working with, oh no, oh, I got in touch with Joe because I found out that he had won an Olivier years before for playing Belize in the original London production of Angels in America. I was like, oh my God, I don't know this about you at all. I know most other things. I did not. And he said a very beautiful thing, which I've always taken. And this is why all this stuff is lovely in that sense. It's your peers saying, well done. Yeah. That's what it's all about. And then when you understand that, don't expect to get work out of it, truly. Don't expect to get work of it, but absolutely be grateful for your peers saying, well done. So that's how I now start looking at all these kind of things. Yeah, I think that's perfect. I always say to um, people like yourself, it's just a really nice pat on the back. When people who know what they're looking at and, and appreciate things, you did good there and we just wanted to let you know. I think that's awesome. That's a great that's attitude to have. Yeah. 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 Thank you. For that. Yeah. Well, no, I I have a feeling we may see you see more of you. I know you're on every TV show. Um, on the <laughs> air, <but laughs> you're like you're on everything, which is awesome. And we might see you at the Emmys. 
I, I hope we do. Um, and congrats on a really, really great season. And, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you so much for your time, Rob. Real pleasure. Take care.